Each of the 12 boxes that fill up the screen represent a portal for hope, an opportunity for companionship, an escape from 30 years of solitude, the possibility for love, for connection, or a blowjob in the park. <laughs> At the same time, each of those 12 boxes represent insanity, instability, flakiness, and the possibility of being catfished. But I can't help myself. It's right there between Google settings and group play. The irony of the latter is not lost to me. Some people's cell phone addiction is Facebook. Some is Candy Crush. My mother's is sending me cryptic text messages while rebelling against all things grammatical. Mine is Grindr. If by chance someone in this room is unfamiliar with Grindr or its specifics, I doubt that's possible. But if you are, then let me explain. It's a GPS-based app that tells you where the nearest gay is. How many miles away or in close enough proximity, how many feet away the person with said app is from you. Does it sound creepy? Well, that's because it is. <laughs> I choose, however, to ignore that part. Do you think the junkie cares if his smack is bad? It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> he, like me, is addicted. Who, you may ask, will you find on Grindr? You have people who want to date. <laughs> you have people who say they want to date, but really just want a blowjob in the park. <laughs> You have people who say they want to date, but, re but are really just freaky perverts. Mm. <laughs> you have the headless torso and or body pic, usually semi-nude. You have the headless torso and or body pic, usually semi-nude, who is not looking for hookups. He is not here for hookups. How much more clear can he be about that? There's only one thing he is here for, and that is friendship. <laughs> Also, he has a hungry power bottom. But come on, people, he is here for friends, so let's keep it classy. <laughs> this guy wants to play soccer. <laughs> the preppy, classically handsome boy that doesn't want sex. But would it be okay if he comes over later and gives me an enema? This guy is being somber. He is duly reflective, considering he is at the Holocaust Museum. The conversations often explode with wit. This guy is hot. I say hi. He says hi back. He's staying at a hotel near my house. I'm horned up. He says, wanna come over? Of course I do, look at you, speedo model much. But I don't hook up, I say. We don't have to do anything, man. We can just chill, watch Netflix. <laughs> yeah, right. I strongly consider this. At least the pretense isn't sleazy. But then I think, what would the body count have been if Jeffrey Dahmer had Grindr? <laughs> so I say next time, and then I eat a cupcake, because it just tastes better than anonymous sex anyway. <laughs> this chatting and never meeting is systematic, partly because I love the flattery. I wish I were bigger than that, but it's true. I don't hook up because I tell myself I have strong Midwestern puritanical values and a finely tuned moral compass. Sex is only for love. 
But that would be the lie of the century. <laughs> My powers of slut have known great strengths. <laughs> but those days came from pre-apps, pre-websites. It's just meeting people when they are two-dimensional that keeps me chaste. I end my phone app romance at the level of chat because of that singular enemy, fear. Fear keeps me moral. Not the fear of being mangled by a stranger, but the fear of humiliation. We all know stories of someone showing up at the front door only to be sent away, even having been insulted. Now, in fairness, showing up 10 years older than the picture you are displaying is false advertising. <laughs> The one time I did go over to a man's house, there were many differences between the photo and the real man. Mainly in the photo, he had teeth. <laughs> True. I'm not a sucker for any one specific body type in the least, but I am a sucker for honesty. Unless, of course, I'm the one telling the lie. <laughs> Speedo Jock sees the green dot in the corner indicating I am online, even though I said I was going to bed an hour ago. He may or may not call me out on this. They're all different. They're all different, but it's all the same. Grinder is not a secret weapon in my war against loneliness. It is a double agent perpetuating fear. It's digital crack in my hand. It's the day before Halloween. My friend Melissa was relocating to Japan in a matter of days, and, I need, and needing every minute of FaceTime, I decided to stay for a second candy corn-flavored cream cocktail. We had just seen Evil Dead the Musical, <laughs> where when a character has an appendage axed off, the actors spray the audience with fake blood, all while singing and dancing and making gutter-level puns. After wiping the pink water from my face and discarding the provided poncho meant to protect my clothes from the stage blood, we walked to the dimly lit hipsterish bar across the street. After her second drink, she excused herself to use the restroom. I pulled out my phone and opened Trusty Grinder. I had a message. Dusty wanted to know how my evening was going. Dusty was a scruffy, baby-faced recent transplant from the East Coast with giant, beautiful blue eyes. <clears throat> we had made vague plans to meet up for coffee soon, and every virtual conversation was innocuous. Not once had the discussion of sex come up. There was nothing revealing nor, nor salacious about any picture t Dusty texted me, in which she was usually wearing a button-down plaid or an Oxford shirt displaying an often timid, conservative smile. The preppiness of his dress juxtaposed with his tattoos was catnip. <laughs> he seemed like a nice boy, and he certainly dressed like a nice boy. Dusty was what I was looking for. And then Dusty surprised me. Why don't you come up after you finish with the drinks? What? I responded. I don't want to meet you this way, and I didn't think you wanted to meet me this way. Well, bummer. He followed. I kind of really want you to come up tonight. I wasn't sure how to respond. But you seem like such a nice boy. <laughs> I finally reply, wondering when I had turned into an old Jewish woman. <laughs> I am a nice boy, he responded, but I still need dick. <laughs> he made a very compelling argument. <laughs> I kept dropping, I wish I could, but, and I want to, but, but, but he persisted. I let him persist. The truth is, I was tired of my fear controlling me. The truth is, I was tired of being alone. The truth is that I had a touch of whiskey. <laughs> the truth is, I wanted to give Dusty some dick. I decided this would be a defining moment for me. I'll be there in 15. It takes longer than 15. My bladder has reached maximum capacity due to the drinks. It was a confusing drive and a confusing parking lot. 
I really have to go. I don't know how much longer I can hold it. I don't have time to concern myself with details like checking myself in the mirror, noticing I was covered from head to toe in fake blood. <laughs> Neither Melissa nor Tree Stump the bartender said anything. You'd think this would be a really obvious thing to say. I must have been clumsy when taking off my poncho as my arms were covered in blood. My face was covered in blood. My Mickey Mouse t-shirt was covered in blood and I had no idea. I ran up and down the sidewalk looking for the designated number, frantically panting like a madman. With an extra layer of intensity added from the whiskey, I pound on the door. He opens. I see the beautiful blue eyes, the classic button of Oxford. He does look like a very nice boy. I'm covered in blood. <laughs> I have to use your bathroom. <laughs> he is very, very frightened. <laughs> it is my nightmare, my nightmare scenario. I show up to meet a boy, and he has nothing but terror in his eyes when he sees me. Once everything is explained, we find the situation hilarious. And Dusty and I actually hit it off, like really hit it off. I'm over to his house five more times that week alone. I am so grateful for Grindr today, I joke. I'm not joking. He doesn't log on for a month. I know this because I check his profile. <laughs> Creepy, I know. But he doesn't log on and I'm relieved. This is a good sign. Of course, I am still logging on. <laughs> Grinder has indeed proven to be the secret weapon in the fight against loneliness. Though I'm no longer in need of its services, so why? Easy. I am addicted. When Dusty does log on, a month later. It is a strange impasse. We both see each other logged on, and we are both hurt. Why are you logged on, he asks. Easy, I respond. I have pen pals. Why are you logged on? <laughs> we have our first fight. He starts logging on every day. I delete him. He says this is sketchy. He is right. But I don't want to see him on there. I don't want to be hurt. I'm not so happy for Grinder today. I say to him, I'm not joking. I delete my account for a few weeks for his sake, but it's too late. The damage is done. I open a new one. I see him logged on all the time. We see each other less and less in person until the only time I see his beautiful blue calming eyes is when he's accompanied by 11 other men in boxes, descending in proximity to me. The instrument to end the loneliness now only serves to infect the wound. I should never go on. It only hurts to see him, but I can't help it. I am addicted. That's Jonathan Hammond.